This is CS2510, uh, week one, lecture two. So today we're going to talk about conditionals and logical operators. <clears throat> so let me delete this example script and I've renamed the folder from last lecture to week one examples. So today what we're going to talk about is we're actually going to minimize. So let me start the script. So here's the MATLAB editor. So compute minimum of fun the quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c on the interval l comma r so basically the the minimum is when the derivative is equal to zero so x min is when you take the derivative of the quadratic you get 2ax plus b so your x min is going to be minus b over 2 times a okay However, uh, this is true if x min is, so if x min is between, or is in that interval, so it's between L and R, okay? If not, so if x min is greater than or equal to R, uh, f min equals f of R, okay? And if x, and if this point, I mean, basically, if the point lies outside the interval, f min equals f of l, and obviously the assumption here is l is less than r. So, of course, what we will do is we will uh, plot a quadratic function and understand these ideas but in order to do that we need to know how to plot functions in MATLAB and we'll only get into plotting I mean, we will get into plotting by week three but that's when we'll get into it we won't get into it next week however plotting is pretty easy to uh, understand in the sense let's just do an example okay so Basically, the command, so let's do this. This is, uh, I don't know, let's call this quadratic minimum. Okay. okay, so the command we'll use, let me turn on more functionality. I think I'll, uh, I'll plot, okay, We're simple enough. But we basically need to give it the range of, we need to give the function the range of x values and the corresponding y values. Let's plot a sine function. And a simple way to generate the range of x values is to use what is called as the lin space command. So linear space, obviously there's log space, also we won't use it. So we'll use the second form, that is, it generates n points between x1 and x2. Well, how many points is enough? Depends on your function and, among, uh, and a lot of other things. We'll cover all that in week three. But for now, let's just see the sine function from zero to, so, to pi, okay, let's make a thousand points. Put a semicolon and y is sine of x, okay, put a semicolon there, and then plot x comma y. You can see that's looking pretty good, right? But then now let's just see what the effects of having a minimum number, I mean, not minimum, a small number of points. So let me compute the sine and do that. And you can see that that does not even look like the sine function and the sine function that we're used to. So you can do a lot of things with the plot command. I mean, I'm just going to do one more example. So in the sense, I'm going to redefine my x, okay? What I'm going to call my y1. So let me recompute my y. But one thing I can do is I can hold this figure and I can plot for comparison my new sign, right, but in the color red, my new sign function, and there you can see the difference, okay? So anyway, let's plot our, so let me clear all, okay? Let me go back into my quadratic minimum, but what I'm going to do now, let me close the figure, and for that, you can use the close all command, right? We'll talk about figure handles, etc. in V3, that is closing specific figures, but for now, let me get into the editor there. And then 
uh, so let's what we can do is let's first ask the user for uh, so let's do a sprint uh, but well let's do this uh, let's just ask the user for the coefficients oops enter a and this should be a b x squared plus bx plus c enter b and C, enter C, okay, and then the left end point L, comma, R, and the point I want to make is, one of the cool things about MATLAB is the initial comments that you write can, will become, it's not can, will become the output, the help command, watch. So quadratic, minimum there how beautiful is that okay so anyway let's continue so I have to basically say oh a is the coefficient of x squared and f of x the comments explain all that so then if you want well I was gonna say L is less than R but that was already given up in the comment so let's just leave that and then Let's compute x min. We know I mean, is minus b over 2a, but <coughs> we are not done. In the sense, we have to uh, check all these conditions, and for that, we will use conditionals and logical operators. Okay, the conditional that we'll use is what is called as the if else. Okay, I mean we can use else if else if, and notice MATLAB is tab aligning it properly, else, and then end, but we don't need the else ifs, okay, so we can just do if else end, and these are, notice that MATLAB is also highlighting these keywords in blue, so these are reserved words, right, so basically we can say that if see oh what I wanted to do was I'm sorry I wanted to plot yeah that's what I was thinking uh, let's plot this quadratic so for now what I want to do is I'm gonna comment all this out well, actually we need the interval yeah so what we'll do is we'll uh, let's generate lin space left right I don't know, 100 points okay. and then y is a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Now, something about MATLAB is, and I'll talk about this later, we will use the dot operator because everything in MATLAB is a matrix and you want to be syntactically correct and say you're taking the squared. So x is basically a, uh, a row vector of 100 elements, but uh, if you want to square a vector, we are based, what we are doing here is we need to square the elements individually, and that's what the dot implies. Okay, but there it is. Um, <coughs> so what we also need to do is we need to make sure that the constant c is a vector. So right there. So let's just execute the script and you'll understand what I'm talking about when we look at the size of the variables in the workspace so quadratic minimum so let's do our classic x squared plus x plus 1 okay between minus 5 well we need to be careful about the size of the interval so we're doing I don't know minus 2 and 2 because you don't have a if you have like a large interval then you need more number of points obviously for resolving, quote, quote unquote, resolving the function properly. So there it is. But this is what I'm talking about. So see, x is a, come on, there. x is a row vector. It's got one uh, row, but 100 uh, columns. So y should also be the same. Now what we can do is we can plot it. Wow, my computer 
is slowing down. Okay, so there, all right, better. So there it is, the quadratic. <coughs> so you can see in this case that the minimum of the function, if our interval is between minus 2 and 2, does lie in the interval. But let's say I define my interval as 0.5 to 1.5 then obviously my minimum is simply 0.5, okay? So that's that's what I'm trying to, that's what these comments are explaining. Okay. But, okay, so let's continue. So let me just add the plot command here. Plot x comma y, visualize function. <coughs> oh yeah, in this case, I have plotted uh, what I just described was I've plotted the function over our interval of interest, but my point is I could, my point of showing you the interval 0.5 to 1.5 is to explain to you the idea that you have to check where my minimum lies, okay? So let's do that check using the if. Uh, then else, so let's do if x min, so let's do this, if l is, let's just translate this, less than, so let's define our x min, oops, I've already done that here, All right. so if l is less than x min, so that's the less than operator, and so this is the logical and okay, operator in MATLAB x min is less than r okay so notice the tab so minimum let's call this minimum is actually x min, okay? Else, well, in this case, we will do an else if. So, else if x min is greater than. equal to, I don't know if there's a great sign like this, let me just check, help, uh, let's see, okay, there's less than or equal to, okay, there's greater than or equal to, right, super awesome, so help x min is greater than or equal to r, Minimum, notice I don't have semicolons at the end of these conditionals, okay? Is, choo, 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 so let's just evaluate this. So it's going to be A times R squared plus, notice I don't have the, I don't need the dot here, okay? Because R is a scalar, it's a one by one matrix. AX squared plus BX plus C, else minimum is a times l squared plus b l plus c end okay so let's just check our uh, let's just check our function or our script actually it's not a function entry x squared plus bx plus c. So the minimum is going to be negative 0.5. That's exactly what is shown here. Okay. So let's do minus 2 and 2. And the minimum, as you can see, is obviously negative 0.5. But then now let's change the. Um, I'm using the up arrow, by the way, to scroll through the history. And you can also double click on the command history here. So let's just double click on that. Um, and then it'll execute it. It should execute it. 
come on. Okay, fine. I'll just type it in. Quadratic minimum. Okay, so do one, one, one. So then let's do 0.5 and then 1.5. Okay, and then you can see that something's wrong. That the minimum is. Uh, oh, no, it's right. Uh, the minimum is at 0.5 and the value is 1.75. Never mind. So it's correct. So the minimum is at 0.5, value is 1.75. I'll just do one more check. Uh, let's see. Well, we need to, to. So I'll leave this to you as an exercise. That is to check the other conditional. Uh, this one, greater than or equal to, to find another function, a quadratic function, check it. Or choose a different range. What am I saying? Let's just choose a different range. I'm tired. It's late. Okay. So let's do one, 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 negative two, two. Okay. So let's do the plot again. So I checked this endpoint. Let me check this endpoint. So let me do negative two to negative one. And the minimum is at negative 1, which is 1, okay? So the minimum is at negative 1, the value is 1. We're finding the minimum of the function. So there it is, okay, conditionals, and there are a lot of other operators in MATLAB, and uh, so let's look at this. That is, uh, so help, and, okay, so, so this is, sorry, this is the logical and, so where you, uh, the word. Uh, uh, so the logical and is actually given by the double ampersand. Okay. Come on. Uh, so where is it? So here, short circuit logical and is the double ampersand, whereas the element-wise logical and is what we just looked at, which is A and D, right? So it is the double ampersand, and you can see there are other relational operators we used greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, and equal is obviously given by double equals to, right? Because the single equals is assignment. Okay. And what else? Uh, there are also other functions that we will use. Max, for example, max finds the maximum uh, logical limit in x. There is minimum, okay? Then let's see. Uh, there is the, some other functions we'll use are floor, which is rounds elements of x to the nearest integer uh, towards negative infinity. So you go, mm, so the floor function is the largest integer less than or equal to x. For example, example is the best. So if you do floor of negative 2.5, it'll give you negative 3 because that's the largest integer less than negative 2.5, okay? And then ceiling is obviously the smallest integer greater than uh, x, that is ceiling of x, so this should give you negative 2, okay? Oops, so ceiling. Oh, it's called seal, all right. Oh, I don't work, okay? So there, negative 2. And then round, uh, it rounds towards the nearest integer, so let's see negative 2.5, it, it got, it evaluated the same as the floor, right? So I'm curious. So yeah, that's three, okay. So interesting. And then what else? There's also, uh, let's see, we covered, I mean, there are the usual operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then remi there's a reminder operator, rem. So rem, uh, See, is it x comma? Does it work? X comma y. So it's the reminder when x is divided by y. So rem of five comma three should give us two. There it is. Yep. And yeah. So uh, we actually covered a lot in MATLAB. So it's time you started working on your first lab online, and you should also look start looking at your first project. All right. I'll see you in week two.